Hi, folks, and welcome back to part five of getting started with NetFoundry Zero Trust Networking. My name is Skip Barr, and we're going to continue on our journey to get end to end connectivity established to our AWS and our VMware edge router environment. And just to recap, what we've essentially been able to achieve is we've been able to build our network. We have a controller. Uh, built in for our fabric. We've also installed two NetFoundry managed public edge routers with a network policy that allows transit across this network. We've also installed an edge router in Amazon so we can get to the services in uh, web server. We've also installed a VMware image of our edge router that we have uh, that can give us access to a a web server on that particular LAN right here. And we've also installed an endpoint on a, on a server that we can use to access these services at the individual locations across the NetFoundry network. So that brings us right here to part five. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create services for these, create a service right here for this web server. We're gonna create a service for a web server dot 10 on this network. Uh, and then we're going to create an app WAN as well that can that provides the the policy or the definition to allow such connectivity. So let's get started. <clears throat> okay, so we'll get this right here. Okay, so let's go find out our IP address. So the web server we want to get access to is this web server right here, it's called skip web. And it's IP private IP address is dot 53 and it's serving on port 80. All right, so we'll come back into our at foundry console, we'll see we have our, all of our endpoints are looking good. We have our data center edge router, we have our skip cloud AWS demo edge router, and then we also have the user that we want to provide access to. All of our edge routers are still looking good right here. We have two fabric routers, one in data center, one in AWS. And we have a policy just to review everything. And it says all endpoints can connect to the two public edge routers. Good. All right, so let's go to services. You notice we have services and app WANs. You can get there a couple of different ways, but so let's just go to services. We don't have any services. Let's get that set up. We'll create a simple service. We'll call this um, AWS, um, let's just call it AWS um, Hello World. Call it whatever you want. We don't need to have any service attributes or edge router attributes. We can just select this. We'll go, we'll go 172.34.34.53, port 80. We will not use SDK for this. We will do endpoint hosted, select endpoint hosted, and we'll select our endpoint. And we're gonna go with the skip cloud router, AWS. That's the endpoint that's in AWS that is in the same VPC as this IP address up here. Same thing comes down here. We'll pl pl plug that in 172.34.34.53. And we'll go with port 80 on this, good. And we will hit create. Good. Now we'll create another service for the data center web server, data center web server. And we're going to call this it's on a private IP address 168.1.10. Same thing, port 80. This time we'll select the data center edge router. Uncheck that. Endpoint hosted, data center edge router, TCP, same thing, 192.168.1.10. Port 80, good. Oh, let me get this out of here. So data center edge router, hit create. There, now we have our two services created. Now we need to create an app WAN. And what we're gonna be, I'll show you real quickly is that 
when we look at our our this is our our Windows endpoint that we installed our software on, you'll notice that I have that's my demo Windows user. I have no services that are being uh, served into this right now. As soon as I create my app WAM, the services will get pushed to this client, and we'll be able to access these those private websites via this post. So let's create the app WAN. So we'll go to app WAN right here, or we can hit app WAN here. We'll hit plus. We'll call this demo app WAN. All right. So what do we want to access? These are our services we just created. We'll go AWS Hello World. We'll go Data Center Web Server. And who do we want to give access to? We want to give access to the skip uh, the demo Windows user right here. So you'll notice over here on the preview, these two services are being granted access uh, to the demo Windows user. And then we hit create. And we come back over to our Windows server. And you should see these populate. There they go. They just populated. We have two services. We can go check those by clicking this button right here. We have access to 172, 34, 34, 53, and 192.168.1.10. .1 we do not have access to anything else on those networks. We only have access to port 80 and those specific IP addresses for this example. So we can close that out. So that nothing has to be done here. It's automatically going to catch it. We'll come open a new tab. And we'll type in 172.34.34.53 and we'll hit enter. Now we just access that private website and then we'll come the same thing, new tab. We'll put in 192.168.1.10, private IP off the VMware server. There it is, .10. So we're just getting two, we just provided access to a Windows server that's in Virginia to get access to a data center VMware IIS box in North Carolina, and we also gave it access to a website in Oregon AWS. That's very simply how you, how you can do that. Now, there's other things you can do as well. It's really interesting to show. So if we look at, let's just say we want to change it around a little bit. Instead of we can we can consume this via names as well. So we have, um, we look at the, at the services we created. Let's just say we can make things up here. We, we have the AWS Hello World. We, we did it, we, we're consuming it by its private IP up here. Um, but we can also do something else here. We can go, hello, just make something up. Hello, ZD, fake name, not a real top level domain. And I can put 63 in here. It's actually being served on 34, 34, 53 port 80, but I can consume it as hello.zd on port 63. Hit update. Get that out of there. There we go. Hit save. And then we come back here to our client. And we should see this update in here shortly. <clears throat> well, sometimes you have to make a uh, stop it and start it or something. And that let's see if that comes on here. There we go. There. Hello.zd on port 63. So I can come back here, new tab, type it in. We, won't, we don't want to search, so we'll do HTTP, hello.zd, port 63. There we go, still comes up. So that's pretty much the five uh, you know, parts of getting started with NetFoundry, two services, on-prem VCPE implementation, as well as an AWS implementation and a Windows client install. Hope you enjoyed these sessions and Please uh, let us know if we can help you with your journey. Thank you.